Good evening to everybody. Um, I hope that you all enjoyed the uh, first poster session. We continue uh, with that. Some of them will stay around uh, during the conference tomorrow. Uh, really enjoyed having a number of you presenting and all the reviewers came around. We'll tally these uh, scores and we'll announce them tomorrow in the award uh, ceremony for the top uh, posters that have been presented. So it is my pleasure now and distinct honor to introduce to you the chair of the external advisory committee of the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network, Dr. Steve Cutler. Uh, Steve is the interim provost of the University of South Carolina, and he is extremely experienced related to the IDEA programs because he served as a Cobra PI at the University of Mississippi before assuming a position of Dean of the College of Pharmacy at the University of South Carolina and rose in his current position. Uh, he is an expert on medicinal chemistries and natural products, including cannabis, of course. And um, anybody that is working on natural products, uh, I think will find him very, uh, very fruitful, productive discussion with him on anything they do with natural products. So you have uh, his bio on the program. So without further ado, Steve, um, it's all yours. Thank you, Gus. It's a tremendous pleasure to be with you today. I bring greetings from your president, President Bill Tate, as well as from his chief of staff, Mark Beeger. I've had multiple conversations with both of them today, as well as leading up to today. What the role is of the External Advisory Board is we serve the National Institutes of Health. We don't serve the state of Louisiana. We don't serve LSU. We serve the NIH. And NIH has developed this IDEA program, the Institutional Development Award program, so that it could build up those states that are in the lower uh, quartile of funding from NIH. This was designed and developed by Senator Thad Cochran out of Mississippi, who I knew very well, became friends with him when I lived in that state for 10 years. He wanted to mirror what was going on with the National Science Foundation EPSCOR program. And so this was a mechanism in which money could be put into states that don't have historically high funding uh, like we see in California or New York. And the understanding was at that time, Thad Cochran recognized it because he was in Mississippi, that there was talent. There was talent in those states that were underserved by the National Institutes of Health. So with this size of, of award, which represents for an embrace, it's about $2.5 million for a COBRA. It's about $2 million a year. You go through in the COBRA uh, three phases. Uh, when you calculate up the impact that these programs, the IDEA programs have had on the state of Louisiana, you're getting in about the $250 to $300 million range. That's direct cash coming into the state. When you do the multiplier, which you can do those multipliers based off the economic impact, you're well over a billion dollars. The IDEA program is designed to build the infrastructure of an institution and primarily is designed to build the faculty and the students and to get them motivated and to learn what's, what's available in terms of the research. I've looked at a few student posters, I'm listening to them and I'm thinking they're third, fourth year graduate students and they're telling me they're a senior in undergraduate education or in one case, and I won't ask her to identify herself, a sophomore. So I could tell you this is very robust, very healthy. I'd like to recognize my colleagues who are here also doing a review. This review goes directly to the National Institutes of Health. I'd ask them to stand and be recognized. I have Ralphie uh, Luma from Boston College, Ram Samadola from the University of Buffalo, and Mika Luftek from Duke University. Stand and please be recognized. Very capable, very competent scientist. I've been working with him for going on six or seven years. Remarkable individuals. And this is, this is the sort of stuff, this type of review, that helps you become better at what you're doing. It's a tremendous pleasure to meet your dean. Welcome to the LSU. Uh, I've been following you for a few years. We have a connection. My family's from England. He's from England. And so right there, we just got to have a good beer at some point. Gus, thank you for your leadership as PI. I met Gus when he was serving as a PI of Cobra. I served as a, a, a through three phases. When I got to the third phase of my Cobra, I left and went to the University of South Carolina. Wasn't anything against Mississippi. 
Loved what I did. I got to work with marijuana. Didn't smoke it, for the record. Didn't smoke it. But I love it. Gus, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Congratulations on a good program. Okay, um, so it's now my pleasure to introduce you our keynote speaker for this evening. It's actually a real pleasure and distinct honor to introduce to you our new dean of the School of Veterinary Medicine, Dr. Oliver Garden. Um, in the short um, duration of his tenure here, about a year and a half, he already has exhibited a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for biomedical research, and uh, he has uh, propelled I think the School of Veterinary Medicine to the new horizons as we're moving forward to really significantly increase our extramural funding and also position ourselves in the leadership position to help not only LSU, but the entire state of Louisiana through our programs. So uh, you do have his bio, but I want to highlight some of his background. So uh, Dean Garden received his Bachelor of Science in Pharmacology with basic biomedical sciences focus from King's College in London. So he's an Englishman, although he tells me that his mom is of German descent. So I'm sure that there's a hybrid there, which I think it's a plus as opposed to a negative thing. Um, so uh, he also received a Bachelor's of Veterinary Medicine from Royal Veterinary College at the UK and a Doctor of Philosophy in Gastrointestinal Immunology from the Royal Veterinary College in 1998. Um, he has served on many positions over the years. Uh, at the University of Pennsylvania School of Veterinary Medicine, where he um, came uh, to this position as a department head of veterinary clinical sciences, and he's board certified in multiple uh, board certifications. I think he's a card carrying immunologist, and in a recent conversation, I tried to entice him to actually return to the bench and do some uh, immunology science, at least as a coin investing in some grants, so hopefully we'll get him to do this. So. Um, his primary research interest focused on the mechanism of peripheral tolerance, tolerance in healthy disease. And he has worked spanning a number of animal models. And I think it's particularly important because we're very strong here in veterinary medicine of using animal models for uh, one health, for disease, for both for animals and humans. And uh, his, uh, specifically his work has interrogated the role of regulatory T cells and more recently, myeloid derived suppressor cells uh, in this context. Uh, so uh, without further ado, uh, Dean Garden, I'd like to invite you to the podium to deliver this keynote address. Well, thank you very much indeed, Dr. Kasoulis. My goodness, when you hear your bio being recited like that, you think, gosh, I'm getting old. Um, and Dr. Well, Provost Cutler and I have more than Engl English heritage in common. My first postdoc was actually at the University of South Carolina Medical School in Columbia, and I have many fond memories of, of those transformative times there. It was really productive and thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, and I've been around the block a few times. You don't sort of get to this gig without doing a few jobs beforehand, but never have I started a lecture with a toast with alcohol in my hands, following a description of someone who specializes in cannabis and marijuana. So <laughs> on that happy note, let's uh, toast the organizers of today's, well, today and tomorrow's uh, research colloquium, I mean, a symposium, it's a wonderful meeting. It's the 21st of these meetings of the Louisiana Research uh, Biomedical Research Network, uh, the INBRA that uh, is the flagship for this state. It's a joy to welcome our esteemed colleagues and friends from across the state, the 27 institutions that constitute this INBRA, the LBRN. So welcome, and this is to toast everyone's success and health in the coming year. Cheers. <clears throat> This could become a very nice habit. So, um, so excellent, good, good news. Keep drinking. You might, uh, you might appreciate the talk a bit more. <laughs> so, as Gus said, I have been here now for one and a half years. I, it's a real pleasure to be here. And if I don't say it another ten times, biomedical research 
both for human health and animal health is really important to me and we are absolutely on a growth trajectory. We have a vision to better lives through education, public service and discovery and our mission is improving and protecting the lives of animals and people and that's really important to emphasize to superior education, transformational research and compassionate care. And we have three core values, innovation, integrity and compassion. And these weren't made up by me. One, one of the first things I did on coming in was to solicit opinion and, and suggestions by our community. And these were the prevailing after multiple rounds of anonymous voting. These were the prevailing statements and, and words that espouse our values. And I think they serve us very well. We do have a big impact on Louisiana. I'm glad to say here at the School of Veterinary Medicine, both in terms of our economic contribution, which is about in excess of 165 million a year. We uh, multiply the state appropriations by at least five to six times in terms of value for money. And we also have a value uh, added employment multiplier of at least three. So we are good value for the state and we wish to be responsible stewards of the money that we receive both in capital outlay and state appropriations. And we serve both our animals and our humans that live in this fine state. And, and of course our first and foremost function is to serve the state, but we have a national and I'm happy to say a global footprint, um, largely, but not solely because of the missions that we, that we embrace, teaching, healing, discovering and protection and discovery, our research portfolio is really part of that messaging to the state, to the region, to the nation and to the world. Of course, we're here to talk about research and that is one of our key missions. And I'm firmly of the belief that any academic institution worth its salt should be doing research to generate new knowledge or to discover new knowledge which obviously informs the teaching that you then follow on with. We're here because of students, but the teaching that we deliver is informed by the research that we do. And that credibility where your teachers, in many cases, actually do the research that informs what you teach is really important to us as an academic institution. We are, I think, a biomedical research powerhouse and it is because of people like Dr. Kasoulis, Dr. Dugar, and many others, both senior and junior investigators, that were able to say that. We're in the top 10 US schools for NIH funding. And uh, I'm glad to say that we're the top LSU school or college in terms of grant expenditure per faculty. We have a firm One Health focus, that is embracing animal and human health, and environmental health for that matter. And there's a fourth pillar now of plant health. We don't do that yet. So maybe if we got into cannabis and marijuana, we might be able to add that to our portfolio. But for now it's, it's animals and humans and to a certain extent environmental health and the impact of climate change on, for example, vector-borne diseases. And we certainly recognize that our crucial, uh, one of our crucial missions is in, is in our clinical sciences delivered through our hospital and our outpatient clinic. We do truly speak One Health, and this underpins much of what we do. And uh, reciting the definition, it's collaborative. It crosses sectors. It's transdisciplinary. Uh, you can imagine that many different sciences contribute to One Health. It's local to global, and we play on a local, a regional, national, and a global level. And it's all about espousing and delivering and making sure that health is optimal and it has the four pillars. A fourth pillar was recently added, so plant health as well as animals, humans, and the environment, and it's holistic in its approach. And here at the vet school, we have an advantage in that we have familiarity and expertise in multiple species, not only rodents, but also other species that walk into our hospitals with spontaneous disease that we don't need to create but we can study both to advance veterinary, but also, but also human health, which is really important to me. So, you know, we can look at species ranging from pigs to horses, to dogs, to cats, 
to in fact also human beings. Some of our research involves human sampling with, in partnership with our uh, health sciences in New Orleans and Shreveport and elsewhere. So in the last six months alone to December 2022, we generated 3.5 million in new funding over 24 principal investigators. And this is awesome news. And we wish to double our federal funding over the next few years by the judicious recruitment of new faculty and also optimizing the ecosystem for research and grant submissions and success in numerous ways that Dr. Dugar and her team are uh, embracing and delivering right now. And I'm really pleased about that because it's a very important part of what we do. We are advancing and uh, partnering with our uh, partner institutions within the LSU system at large, and it is wonderful. And I'm really delighted to be here and to be able to collaborate with such partners as, for example, the Health Sciences New Orleans, uh, John Stewart and, and partners, who recently visited us and we had a wonderful symposium in which we exchanged ideas and that's led to collaborative conversations already and about to be signed a memorandum of understanding of partnership between uh, Health Sciences New Orleans, the uh, LCMC Cancer Center and also the uh, Vet Med, LSU Vet Med. We have just designated and had approval and now are starting under the leadership of Joseph Francis, a center of comparative oncology, and this will deliver some of the contribution to the push for National Cancer Institute designation of a comprehensive cancer center here at LSU uh, across the different campuses, which is really great news. And we were thoroughly uh, thrilled to have John and his colleagues here at LSU Vet Med, and they even stayed on for our full family picnic at the end of the day. So, um, so they were warmly welcome and embraced the hospitality that we like to feel we extend to our partners and friends. Now, the INBRA is one of several mechanisms in the Institutional Development Award Program built by the um, Division of Building Research Capacity, part of the NIH National Institute of General Medical Sciences. And this was by virtue of a congressional mandate in 1993, as Provost Cutler mentioned, and it's really to expand the geographical footprint of NIH funding to historically underfunded parts of the country. There are 23 states plus Puerto Rico in this, uh, this region, if you like, this network of, of states that are supported by the idea mechanism. And it's growing in its portfolio of funding mechanisms. Centers of Biomedical Research Excellence, there are many of these. We have two of them here at the vet school right now. The uh, IDEA Network of Biomedical Research Excellence, of which we are the administrative core, but there are 27 partners in that. And of course, this is all about celebrating the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network. We have the Clinical Translational Research Networks. We have co-funding, and we have translational um, funding accelerator hubs, hubs to bring to fruition some of the science to a more translational and endpoint uh, in that way. So lots of now uh, five plus mechanisms under this umbrella of the IDEA award program. And we're very pleased to have two of these or more actually in Louisiana, certainly more in Louisiana, but two here at the vet school uh, right now. And we need to acknowledge and thank uh, Senator Bill Cassidy for his constant advocacy of the IDEA program which led to now about 420 plus million in FY22. The numbers are here, and it's constantly been about 1% of the total NIH funding. So there's been continued congressional support. And as a senator, a, a US senator representing Louisiana, we, we certainly want to acknowledge and thank um, Bill Cassidy, who happens to be an MD himself, and gloriously visited the vet school here uh, now a few months ago and was able to see what we do and also get an, a better feeling for what the LBRN does in its uh, total remit. It is a proportion of the funding within the partner states, the 23 plus Puerto Rico, that ranges in Louisiana about 
all the way up to 60% plus in states such as North Dakota. So it really matters. It has a huge impact on the biomedical research that's done. And we could not be more proud or more thankful as one of those idea states for the huge impact that this funding program has had on our research over the last, uh, well, two decades and more. And as uh, Gus, Dr. Kasoulis and Provost Cutler said, the impact, total impact has been in excess of 250 million. And when you multiply that to downstream impact, it's well over $1 billion to the state of Louisiana and, and many more if you consider all 24 partner regions. If you look at the interactive portfolio, the dashboard of the Division of Research Capacity Building, then you can see that, and this was done over the weekend actually, so these are accurate current figures, that there are 132 in, Louis, in, in the um, country, and COBRAs, 24 IMBRAs, uh, the clinical and translational research networks, 13 of those, co-funding in 74 grants, and then uh, others, as you can see. If we focus down on Louisiana, and uh, before doing that, we can see there are some publications that show that this mechanism has impact. There aren't enough of them, but those that have looked at this in a methodical way show that it has a very big impact on the trajectory of the promising junior and then more senior investigators who are funded in this mechanism. So it, it has impact that needs to continue to be measured, but certainly here are two publications, one uh, featuring Rhode Island, the other one featuring Oklahoma, showing that this mechanism makes a difference. It's not just eye-wateringly large numbers of dollars of funding, but also having an impact on the personal career trajectories of those individuals who were fortunate enough to be supported in this way. And we have many of them here at LSU, and certainly that many that I'm familiar with on a very personal level here at LSU Vet Med. If we look at the dashboard numbers for Louisiana, we can see that the numbers are equally impressive if you focus down on our region. We have seven COBRAs, of course, one INBRA, the LBRN, uh, one CTR that's uh, uh, headed by Pennington Biomedical Research Center, and then four co-funded projects and other research that's supported in that way. So this funding mechanism makes a difference to our state and to the biomedical research that we can do. It always has, and certainly that's still true right up until the current time. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail. In terms of COBRA grants, and I focused on these, there are a number. And for example, at Pennington Biomedical Research Center, there are two there. For whom, uh, for which the PIs are top, Dr. Thomas Gettis and Jacqueline Stevens, looking at obesity, diabetes mellitus, and the metabolic basis of disease. We then have some at Shreveport, uh, applied immunology, a subject very close to my own heart, headed by Dr. Andrew Yoroshkov, co rather, and then redox biology and cardiovascular disease by Chris Kevill. Uh, if we look at uh, New Orleans, the uh, LSU Health Sciences Center there, uh, Daniel uh, Capusta in terms of mentoring in cardiovascular disease, translational research, Augusto Ochoa Ochoa, and then viral oncology, Christoph Rice. And then finally, Tulane Health Sciences Center, looking at translational research in cardiometabolic disease, Zhang He and Mikhail Jasvinsky who is doing work on research excellence in aging and regenerative medicine. So a lot of COBRAs having a very big impact on the careers of junior investigators who are being mentored and who are being supported in this way. It really makes a big difference. I'd like to highlight um, John Kerwin and others. He's the PI of the Louisiana Clinical and Translational Science Center, which is a collaborative 10 institutions in our state and has a very, very big impact in terms of addressing health disparities of citizens of Louisiana who are afflicted with chronic diseases of a variety of types, ranging from uh, cancer all the way to, to metabolic diseases, diabetes mellitus and, and others. And it runs the gamut from professional development to health literacy, raising awareness, clinical resources, community engagement, pilot, uh, projects and 
uh, informatics. It really is massive in its impact and uh, benefit. The force for good that it represents is really very impressive. The significance to us cannot be underestimated either. We uh, are the administrative core of the um, Louisiana Biomedical Research Network, as you all very well know, and we're currently in the fourth cycle of its funding. We've accrued 76 million since 2005, and we are all about fostering, and this network is all about fostering interdisciplinary biomedical research. It doesn't get much better than that. And here are the centers. And I, again, I'd like to highlight Dr. Kasoulis's work and also now Brent Stanfield has joined the team. So welcome Brent. We recognize the huge talent and expertise that you bring to the table. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I think that needs another toast, doesn't it? Is everyone finished their drink? Drink up. Things get better the more you drink. So uh, we ha have also had uh, a number of COBRAs. We concluded in 2021, uh, just before I came here, the third and final phase of a Center for Expandable Infectious Disease. This was uh, headed by, by Gus, and we are in the middle of now phase one of a lung biology and disease, about to renew that uh, in, um, well, it's due for renewal. It's concluding in December of this year. And so that's wonderful. It's already set on a very firm footing the trajectories of several junior, promising junior investigators. And of course, we now have had funded last year, well, year before that, say last year, 2021, the Preclinical Cancer Research COBRA, um, but known by the name of the Center for Preclinical Cancer Research, headed by Joseph Francis and uh, the Center for Lung Biology and Disease, uh, for which the PI was um, Samathambi Jayasilan. Jay, we call. Uh, he's affectionately known by and now Tammy Dugar as well, a co-PI uh, in that endeavor. So great news. And what I'm showing here on the right-hand side are organoids, spheroids of cancer. And Joseph's developed these in his lab for a number of different histotypes of cancer and really exciting work and great potential for modeling in 3D, the interactions of not only the cancer cells, but also the immune cells and the microenvironment in which they act in vitro to do drug testing and other, um, for example, patho mechanistic studies that would otherwise only be done in vivo. So a very nice in vitro system that we are developing. And the overarching body that's really taken uh, charge, if you like, of the IDEA program is the National Association of IDEA Principal Investigators. And I'd like to recognize the leadership team. The president is uh, Gus Dr. Kasoulis. The past president was Douglas Wright from Kansas University Medical Center, and then others involved are Ian Meng, University of New England, Robert Seville from the University of Wyoming, and Julia Oxford from uh, Boise State University. So a really great team. I did some homework on them. I don't know them personally, but uh, incredibly talented and accomplished scientists, all of them. And this is really a wonderful way of bringing together all of the IDEA programs in a way that speaks to a national imperative and, and galvanizes the expertise and the value of this network. We were very privileged and honored to be the host of a NISBRA last year. That's the National IDEA Symposium of Biomedical Research Excellence. There were 1,500 attendees. It was a virtual meeting. We had over 500 posters. It was awesome. And one heck of a heavy lift for Gus and his team. Um, it came together at the 11th hour, but I know that they were sweating profusely uh, as it led up to the event because it was a national event, very big and quite complex to pull off. So many congratulations for getting that uh, done with such a plum and really had a big impact uh, in that way. I think the next one will be in person, so that's great, but uh, very well done for pulling it off in a virtual platform, which was a uh, big, a very big lift. So the future is bright, and as I say, this really, this whole program has launched the careers of innumerable scientists, and this has been documented by the impact they've had on the world to advance health, whether it be human, 
or indeed even animal health it, and the interaction between the two, the nexus between the two and their environment vis-a-vis -vis one health. So this is all about eradicating health disparities that exist in many of the idea states. Certainly Louisiana is one of them and in which we do see that, uh, sadly. And I think this mechanism is a way of trying to eradicate those and address those imbalances and inequities. And I think we can do this in an effective way by connecting all the idea programs on the NAPI uh, website. We, uh, I think, can envision a situation where we have super networks of different states working with each other on common biomedical research themes, even within our own state. I saw some commonality of some of those COBRAs. So I think there's leverage and synergism to be had by connecting them across states even. And I think the One Health philosophy that we really embrace here at LSU Vet Med is a way of accelerating biomedical research for human health. There's gaining recognition of the value of large animal models, namely dogs and cats and horses that walk into our clinics with spontaneous disease. You don't need to induce it. It's spontaneous. It looks and acts and behaves and is treated in a similar way to the human diseases for which there are very clear parallels. Moreover, these animals share our environment. So xenobiotics and other predisposing factors, for example, for cancer, also have an impact on our animals, which are often sentinels of our environment and those environmental exposures and develop the diseases faster. It's cheaper to do clinical trials in our, in our veterinary patients, and that can often inform drug pipelines into human health and accelerate and make cheaper that pipeline into uh, treatments of, for example, cancer and other devastating diseases. There's clearly a role for uh, free exchange of seminars, courses, and publications. And I know that they are developing this platform on the uh, Justin Speak to This NAPI site. And I think it, it behooves us to continue articulating the outcome and impact of this program, because it's only in that way that we'll be able to make the case for continuing it for many years to come. And then finally, there would be mechanisms, I'm sure, and it doesn't take much imagination and creativity to think of these, to cross collaborate between idea states and non idea states. The fact that we're supported by this program does not mean that the science that we deliver is any less good any less impactful than that in the non-idea states. And I'm sure that already this is happening, but it can be accelerated by making possible those collaborations across idea and non-idea states to propel biomedical research into its future as we see it. So we embrace One Health, we embrace the Embra system, we celebrate it, we're very grateful that it exists. And it obviously has had a massive impact on all 24 regions, 23 states in Puerto Rico and in the state of Louisiana. I'm gonna conclude there by saying thank you very much for your contributions to this wonderful meeting. It's a pleasure to see it happening here. We're so pleased to have you with us. And we really hope you enjoy the meeting, both its scientific content and the libations and the food that's on offer this evening. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you to our esteemed guests. Thank you to the External Advisory Committee. You all uh, really, uh, obviously your expertise, your talent, your commitment is pivotal to the success of these programs. And we know that and we're very, very grateful for that uh, contribution. So thank you very much, Provost Cutler and your team. And thank you all for coming.